welcome to Hormone Optimization. My name is Justin Reich. Today, we're going to be talking about insulin and how it affects our internal environment, which influences neurotransmitters and hormones to ultimately shape our thoughts and our behaviors, which are going to impact our performance, whether it's in the gym, on the field, or in life. So insulin, it's really the only hormone you can control yourself based on what you eat, what you put in your mouth. High sugar, simple sugar foods are going to lead to increased blood sugar. Glucose is going to cause insulin to secrete from the pancreas. That leads to delivering the free floating sugars along with amino acids into cells and feeding the systems that influence our health and performance. So when insulin secretes based on an increase in blood sugar levels, and you have this free-floating glycogen, which is the usable form of sugar, glucose to glycogen, and amino acids, your body's gonna deliver it to forming systems. Your brain, liver, muscle, and fat. Your brain is gonna be the biggest metabolizer of that. Liver's gonna take up a little bit, but what we're gonna focus on here is muscle and fat. And that's what leads us to determining, is insulin good or bad? Because we hear a lot of things. Well, it depends. Depends on what state you're in. Are you insulin resistant? Are you insulin sensitive? Let's go into detail about what that is. When you're insulin sensitive, the cell represented right here, this is a muscle cell, has more receptor sites to accept insulin and utilize it. In insulin resistant state, the muscle cell doesn't have many receptor sites, so you have a lot of free floating insulin circulating around, thus you have a lot of blood sugar circulating around. Your body needs to do something with that. So in a resistant state, instead of shoving the glycogen into the muscle cells, it's going to shove it into fat cells. Whereas in insulin, insulin sensitive state, you have more receptor sites on the muscle cells, so your, your, those cells are going to be able to take in that glycogen more effectively. It's literally the opposite when it comes to resistant versus sensitive. So when you look at being good or bad, resistant is bad, sensitive is good. So we want to get on the side of sensitivity. And it's a, it's a sliding scale to understand this. So just because you're lean and muscular doesn't mean you're always insulin sensitive. Factors such as sleep, movement, muscle mass, diet, lifestyle factors, will influence your state of sensitivity. If you're on the highest spectrum of sensitivity and you have a poor night's sleep, you may be more resistant the next day, so you need to manage your carb timing, your intake, and movement, because that's gonna influence how sensitive or resistant you are. Let's go into the facts of insulin resistance and how it impacts your performance and health. When we look at resistance, the remaining glycogen, so we said brain is the main metabolizer of glycogen, then it goes into muscle and fat. Well, if you're insulin resistant, the majority of the remaining gly glycogen is going to be shoved into fat cells. That's going to cause systemic inflammation. Your fat cells will actually secrete inflammatory markers based on that. This is going to increase more body fat, decrease energy. Have a box of donuts and tell me if you feel energetic afterwards. You probably won't. It's going to reduce cognition. People who are insulin resistant have lower test scores, they're not as, they're frankly, they lose uh, a certain level of IQ, so their cognition goes down. And increased levels of stress, their stress resilience goes down. Something important between insulin is understanding its relationship with cortisol. Insulin and cortisol are inversely related, so when insulin spikes, cortisol drops. And I wanna bring up an important point here, is people think that it's always best to eat carbohydrates first thing in the morning because you're more insulin sensitive then. Well, when we consider its relationship with cortisol, when you wake up in the morning, you want cortisol to be high because it gets you up, it gets you driven and going. If you take in a carbohydrate and reduce cortisol, you're gonna be lowering your energy and drive. Also, carbohydrates are related to serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter. When you take in carbohydrates, going to produce more serotonin typically and that's going to lead to just a lower state you're not going to be as driven or energetic serotonin is good for relaxing and calming down so i like to actually do the opposite 
I prefer to have my carbohydrates at night where you're going to decrease cortisol and increase serotonin to help you get into a good state for sleep and recovery, which is going to lead into improving insulin, insulin sensitivity as a whole. So back to this, and stress is affected. This leads to systemic inflammation. All these things, the increase in body fat, the decrease in energy, throwing the glycogen into fat cells and swelling them up to cause inflammation within the adipose cells is going to lead to chronic inflammation, which is going to affect everything. Your performance, your risk of injury is going to go up, your recovery is going to go down. It can, really, it can lead to not only foggy brain, but it can lead to joint pain and other issues. This leads to a cascade of hormonal imbalances, which can affect your health and obviously your performance. So that's insulin resistance. Now let's go to insulin sensitivity. This is where we want to get, get to. Instead of the glycogen going into fat cells, insulin sensitivity individuals are gonna go replace glycogen into the muscle cells themselves. This is gonna to lead to increased nutrient intake as a whole. Amino acids and glycogen going into muscle cells is gonna help them to repair. It's gonna improve conditioning because a muscle cell full of glycogen is gonna be able to go harder, longer. This is gonna improve your stress resilience because you're managing insulin more effectively, thus helping with the balance of cortisol. So improving stress resilience is gonna reduce inflammation, reduce systemic inflammation, increase nutrient intake is going to reduce systemic inflammation. This leads to increased levels of strength and performance because your conditioning is up, your recovery is improved, and as a whole, your performance is going to increase. And this is all because of a balanced hormonal system. So things that will affect insulin as a, is food. We mentioned high glycemic foods are going to spike insulin faster than low glycemic foods. Omega-3 fatty acids are going to improve insulin sensitivity improving your ability to handle insulin. Fenugreek, chromium, and cinnamon are also things that you can use to improve insulin sensitivity along with good food choices. Ways to test out insulin sensitivity. The gold standard is HbA1c to test out insulin sensitivity. It's a good marker to determine where you're at. The higher it is, the more insulin resistant you are. The lower it is, the more sensitive. Fasting insulin test and fructosamine test will help to paint the picture of your insulin sensitivity and how you manage that. So that's all for insulin. Really what you need to walk away with is resistance is going to lead to systemic inflammation and an imbalance of hormones, reducing performance and increasing your risk of injury, increasing body fat. Insulin sensitivity is going to lead to a leaner individual less body fat, improved recovery and conditioning, better strength and better performance and balanced hormones as a whole. This leads to a healthier body, which is going to lead to better performance. So that's it for insulin. If you like this content, please like, share and comment. And if you'd like to know more about optimizing your hormones, you can contact me and we can set up a consultation. Thank you for watching.